welcome in this video we will try to understand the saffron in sikkim so generally when we talk about the saffron we think of kashmir but there has been a pilot project which was undertaken and it has shown good result so going forward there is a possibility that you can see the saffron coming from the sikkim as well so let's begin this video let's get the context and try to understand what are the geographical condition required for saffron to grow as well as along with that we will also try to understand about the geographical indication tag which saffron has got recently so let's move forward the ministry of science and technology through the department of science and technology is now looking at extending the its cultivation to some state in northeast so they have tried with the sikkim but it is not going to remain just sikkim but it could even go to other state of northeast A pilot project of saffron cultivation has yielded successful result in the Yanggang village of Sikkim. So you don't actually have to remember the village name, but it's actually Yanggang, so it's easy to remember. That village was uh, being decided by the Department of Science and Technology to carry out the saffron cultivation, and it has shown good results. It's produced its first crop of saffron recently, and it's finally could be con uh, concluded that the conditions with some modification are also favorable in certain part of northeast which could provide better suitable condition for the saffron cultivation so saffron cultivation has long been restricted to a limited geographical area in jammu and kashmir so in jammu and kashmir it's not like saffron grows everywhere but it is again restricted to few geographical areas what are those pampor which is the largest region then it has badgam shrinagar and kishwar district so these are the few places where the saffron was cultivated even in jammu and kashmir india cultivates around 6 to 7 tons of saffron annually but in order to meet the 100 tons demand saffron is imported so this is one thing you need to remember that saffron gets imported into india because even though saffron is produced in india it is not equivalent to what is required so the demand for saffron is more and the production is less thus india import the saffron as well a kilo of saffron grown here cost anywhere between rupees 1.5 lakh to 2 lakh now you can look at it so this is one of the costly spice so saffron is a kind of a spice and it is costly in its production or it sells in a good uh, value so uh, kind of encouraging this kind of cultivation will also help the farmers it will also have economic benefits to the region or even to the uh, community which has been denied with a particular economic benefits over a period of time so for the overall development of northeast also this could be considered as a step taken forward so these are the few things you need to know about the context now let's move forward and try to understand what saffron is so like in your geography and ncert book you have already might have studied about the temperature required for the growth of different uh, crops for an example your wheat jute cotton in that regard let's also try to understand what are the condition in which saffron can grow so in india saffron seeds are cultivated during the months of june and july at some places in august and september so what is the time period or which time of the year the saffron is cultivated if you see it is generally june and july and even august and september so that is the time period of a year when the saffron is cultivated saffron grows well at an altitude of 2000 meters above sea level it needs a sunlight of 12 hours so first of all it's uh, it is at the elevation of around 2000 meter where it's grow properly and also it needs sunlight so it's not like if uh, a place have rainfall throughout it will not be suitable for the growth of cultiv uh, saffron and 12 hours sunlight is required by the saffron plant it grows in many different soil types but thrives best in calcareous uh, from calcareous the soil that has calcium carbonate in abundance so if a soil has cacio3 calcium carbonate in abundance that kind of soil could be considered ideal for the growth of saffron it should also be humus rich and well drained soil with a ph between 6 to 8 which mean it is more towards a neutral side of ph only because if we go below 7 it gets acidic if we go above 7 it gets alkaline and 7 is the neutral so 6 and 8 means it is more along the line of neutral ph 
and it the soil need to be well drained so if the water is accumulated again that particular soil is not fit for the cultivation of saffron then what are the other conditions so for saffron cultivation we need explicit climatological summer and winter with temperature ranging from no more than 35 to 40 degree celsius in summer to about minus 15 to minus 20 degree celsius in winter so for the cultivation of saffron we need summer as well as we need winter so the temperature range if you see over here it is 40 degree to minus 20 degree so that is the entire range in which the saffron could go and temperature beyond it or like above 40 degree celsius will not be suitable for the cultivation saffron needs to remain underground for about 45 days at sub zero temperature so again it requires cold climate so you can understand jammu and kashmir which could have such kind of climate that is why saffron was cultivated over there recently kashmir saffron got the gi tag status so in the upcoming video we will try to understand what is gi tag so let's begin so gi tag it is basically an insignia on products having a unique geographical origin and evolution over centuries with regard to its special quality or reputed attribute so if a particular product has been developed over centuries with a certain unique characteristics associated with its origin geography then such kind of products are eligible to get a gi tag it is a mark of authenticity and ensure that registered authorized users or at least those residing inside the geographic territory are allowed to use the popular product name so that's the thing with gi tag so it produces kind of an authenticity so if you go somewhere like for an example kashmir has now got the gi tag for its saffron so you know that saffron produced in jnk has a certain kind of authenticity gi tag in india is governed by geographical indication of goods registration and protection act of 1999 so that is the act under which the gi tags are provided and which is the authority which issue that so it is the geographical indication registry which is located in chennai so these are the few things that you need to know about the gi tag now let's quickly glance through few of the gi tags in india so gi uh, india has a huge list because of the diversity we have within our country it is a huge list of gi tags we have but let's just quickly glance through few of them so we have the kashmiri pashmina that is a gi tag then we have kullu uh, shawl that is again a gi tag kota doria we have a guards of court again from gujarat we have mysore silk we have bidri artwork then we have the uh, tirupati laddu then if you can see we also have the madhubani painting lucknow lucknow chicken uh, handicraft work so all these are gi tag and this is not an exhaustive list if you like go ahead and see every states had a lot of gi tag from a upsc point of view the gi tag which are recently been in news or which are recently being granted you can have a look at them or you can keep them at some place so that you could revise it at a later stage so i hope you have understood this video if you have any doubt feel free to drop a comment thank you